Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Adventure 406. We are starting off today's adventure just past the Comet Mining Town at the entrance to the Wix Tunnel. Here are some choice words from Hayden. Alright, we're going to the secret tunnel. It's cold. See my breath almost. Thank you for that weather report, Hayden. And now we're going to go ahead and move into the tunnel. That's right, buddy, let it all out. We're gonna go ahead and fast forward through this part. There's not a lot of exciting stuff, you know, mostly just driving through the tunnel. The Wix Tunnel used to be a railroad tunnel. It serviced the town of Wick and the Comet Mining Town. It was abandoned in 1982, and now it serves as a popular attraction for avid adventurers and four-wheel drivers like myself. We had heard from some other groups that had done this previously that the exit to the Wix Tunnel was flooded. You know, the big unknown was that how deep was it? With the snorkel on my Land Cruiser, I wasn't too concerned, but some of the other vehicles in the group were indeed concerned about how deep that exit might be. Let's turn off the lights and see exactly how dark it gets in this tunnel. As you can see, even with my daytime running lights on, it is pitch black in there. It's like driving through ink. Woo! Talk about eerie, man. I am glad to have the lights on and be moving in a forward direction again. It was about this point that we heard from the convoy leader over the radio. Probably the worst news you can get on a narrow trail was that a group of other drivers was headed in our direction. It took us about 15 to 20 minutes in the middle of this pitch black wet tunnel to figure out how we were going to get past this Ford, but we did manage to find a place that was a little bit more wide that offered the Ford to get on one side of the tunnel and allowed us to squeeze all of our vehicles past on the other side of the tunnel. As you're about to see here, it got uncomfortably close. There was literally a fraction of an inch in that, but we did make it through and the rest of the vehicles were some UTVs, so it wasn't as sketchy after this. With the incoming convoy in our rear view mirror, it was time to move back to trail speed and get to the end of the Wix tunnel. Alright, now here you can see the convoy starting to slow down as the width and the depth of the water starts to get progressively deeper and um, everybody's kind of slowing it down to make sure that nobody gets stuck and of course we want to slow down at the entrance to each of these giant puddles to make sure that uh, you're not coming up on somebody as they are stopped right in the middle of it. Just look at how deep that water is inside of this tunnel. After about 45 minutes to an hour, we finally start to see a light at the end of the tunnel. We're finally nearing the end of the Wix tunnel and you can see that the water is getting wider and deeper. 
And one of the other things that you can't see is there's railroad ties submerged in the water and lots of big rocks. When you're going through deep water like this, it's important to not go too fast, but also keep some momentum going. You want to have a nice bow wave at the front of your vehicle, and that bow wave will basically keep the water from going too deep inside your engine bay. And just like that, we are through the famous Wix Tunnel. After we made it through the tunnel, we split into two groups. One group is going to take the long and slow route to the Elkhorn Ghost Town. And the second group, which we were a part of, was going to take the much shorter but also much more difficult route to the Elkhorn Ghost Town. This route included uh, some rock crawling, generally rough terrain, couple of low muddy spots and uh, one small section of steep canyon which got the best of at least two of our vehicles. Now this big Jeep that you see here in front of me, being a Jeep had a much shorter wheelbase than I did. He also had much larger tires than I did. So some of the things that the Jeep sailed over, I had some struggles with the longer wheelbase of the Land Cruiser. But some of the things that the Jeep struggled with, like this next obstacle that's coming up, he really struggled to get the Jeep over this next obstacle. And I did it with relative ease in the Land Cruiser. As I come up to the bottom of this rock ledge, you can see the Jeep up there. He's just at the back end of getting his uh, differentials unstuck from this rock ledge that I'm about to do. I think the reason that I had such great success here is that I really took the time to pick the right line up this obstacle. Let's take a look and see how I do. I'm not very good at it. Driver's side tire right here. Put your driver's side right here, just to the inside of that rock. As you can see here, it took me a couple of times to get my car lined up just in that perfect spot. And don't be afraid when you're out there wheeling to give it a couple of shots and get that baby lined up just perfectly. By this point in the journey, my power steering pump was very upset with me. A little bit to my driver's side. A little bit to the driver's side, right there. Now hold that line. You open? Alright, you got to get a little bit of skinny pedal then. Since I don't have locking differentials, I'm going to have to use a little bit of loud pedal to get up over this rock. Yeah. <laughs> 
There she is, up and over. What a machine, the Land Cruiser. Unfortunately, this is about the last of the footage that I have before the batteries and both of my GoPros died. And this is right before the carnage that ended our trip a little bit early. And basically right after this, there's this big canyon section and uh, lots of big rocks to crawl over. And I was impatient. I did not pick a good line. And I ended up twisting my drive shaft off. So the yellow Jeep in front of me was nice enough to turn around and roll back to town with me. And while we were getting him turned around, the buggy that was leading our convoy actually rolled all the way down that canyon. And this picture here is the aftermath of that. Luckily, nobody was hurt. That buggy was tough as nails. And we were able to get him straightened back out and headed up to the hill. And the yellow Jeep and I went back down and we took the easy route. We were able to make it up to the Elkhorn ghost town with no extra dramas and what a cool place it was to see and we found out there were actually still people living there. So despite the fact that we snapped a drive shaft and had to turn around early, altogether it was a wonderful trip. What a cool experience. Thanks for watching.